Hello, my name is Trey. <laughs> Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Today, we're going to be talking about Shannon Sharp and the Stephen A. Smith. I know some of you guys have already gone ahead and watched it. I just want to talk about a couple of things that I noticed and I wanted to highlight. So let's go ahead and get into this. As a fresh reminder. You have no objectivity. It's just straight Brady still, hate. Still. Wait, wait a minute. This is just straight hate by a guy who's jealous that he is still playing at a high level at 45 when you had to stop at 35. Still, that's what you that's do. That's the point. That's what you do. Every time somebody, every time I call something into question, I'm jealous. No. Still, I did well, what I, I did. I never said you were jealous of Baker Mayfield. Still, I did what I did. You make it seem like I was a bum. I'm in the effing Hall of Fame. Okay. I so got three what? Super Bowls. So what? So what? He's way better than you were. I'm better way than you. Better. Still, what the I got to see what you do, you take personal shots. No, when you, for I, don't, I don't take yeah. personal oh, shots. Time you time started time it. Time out. You would take a personal shot at me. I didn't so, take oh, a personal shot at you. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You would take a personal shot. Put your glasses back on. <laughs> you see that video right there, Shannon, uh -huh. months uh -huh. later. Uh -huh. at, when I saw that, I hadn't spoken to you in years. Years. Mm -hmm. You know, we were mm -hmm. always cool. We never had any issues, yeah. but I hadn't spoken mm -hmm. to you in years. When I saw that video, I said, I don't have to know him. I know Skip. That relationship is in a world of trouble. Mm -hmm. As you reflect back on that moment, what goes through your mind and how much trouble was the relationship between you two in at that particular moment? There were th a lot of that is my fault because there were times that led up to that that I felt that shots were taken and I let it go. And I should have said something then, but I didn't. And I would bring it to people's attention and they brushed it up under the rug. So that was my fault that it got to that point and he felt that he could go over the top in that situation. I think in any relationship where there's host, co-host, it's boyfriend, girlfriend, it's husband, wife, whatever the relationship is, once one partner has no respect for the other, the other partner then in turn loses respect for said partner. Then I think it's only a matter of time. Because I felt in that moment he had lost all respect for me. He had no respect for me. He's trying to compare me to a tight end. I never said I've always given Brady his credit. I've always given all great players, all players. Trying to compare players. you to a quarterback. I, trying to compare you to a quarterback. Right. Gotcha. What I was trying to say in that moment, Brady didn't play well. Brady didn't play well that game. I didn't talk about anything that he had done three weeks ago, three years ago, 20 years ago. I'm talking about that game. And for him to feel that he was trapped and he was losing a debate to attack me personally, when I've stood up, when guys have come on that show and tried to attack him personally, I was his bodyguard. I took the blows and said, hey, this is undisputed. Skip and Shannon, this is not yours. So one thing I wanted to talk about, <clears throat> when I was in debate as a young man, and let me make this clear, when I was in debate, I was absolute trash. I took a debate. I was in, you know, where you do the, the, what do you call them now? It's when you go to competition for like math, science, reading, stuff like that. I forgot what you call those competitions when you were younger. But nonetheless, I went into debate. I went there and got smacked. I mean, I came in dead last. It was the most one of the most embarrassing moments of my young, young childhood. Um, but nonetheless, I got a ribbon because as long as you placed in the top six, you got a ribbon. Well, there was only six places. So guess who got top six? Uh, it was an embarrassment. So nonetheless, I, I, go through this, I, I go through this debate. And one thing that you're really taught in debate is that you never want to get personal. In fact, I think in this competition, if you said something personal, which was kind of hard to do because you were talking about a particular topic, but if you made it personal, the debate was over, right? It, they ended it. You lost. I'm going to say, he said that Shan, I mean, Skip had lost respect for him. And I agree. I think the one time that I've ever really gotten personal with people is because I have zero respect for them. You guys have heard me talk about tons of people. You guys heard me talk about Sneeko, Pearly Things, the Hodge Twins. Um, you heard me talk about Destiny to Tom Dark to Think Before You Sleep to Brittany Venti. You've heard me talk about, you know, all these different type of people, people I didn't agree with, the uh, the uh, 
LGBTQ plus Blair stuff like that. Some people I agree with. Sometimes I don't. I disagree with them. One thing I try not to do is take personal shots at them. But you may notice if I have, and I can't sit here and regulate specifically if I've taken personal shots at people. But when I'm when I lose respect for people, that's the easiest time to take a personal shot. Even if I don't know them, I could be like, you know what, you're just a garbage human being. You know, it's when you say something like that, or I'll say something maybe maybe along the lines of, I just think you're a terrible person. You know, that is more personal than me attacking the topic at hand. And I'm pretty sure I did that with Sneeko. I can't remember, but I had lost respect for the man. Like, he made me so upset. A man who doesn't know me. And I wasn't upset with him because I don't know him. I was upset what he was doing, what he knew he was doing, and he knew he was hurting young men with the platform he has. He wasn't taking responsibility. He was just grifting and doing all this stuff. Even though he's a young man, you still have to know what you're doing. You don't get a pass when you're 25 years old, 24, 22. If you do something stupid in your 20s, you still may go to prison for the rest of your life. I told you the story about my buddy who did something heinous. He's never getting out of prison. I can't say anything because, oh, he was only 19. doesn't matter. You still have to have some kind of knowledge. You got to use your head just a little bit, right? So I think what he has done to society has made me very upset. So it's hard for me not to get personal, which is why I don't tend to talk about people. I don't tend to make direct videos on people like Sneeko or Pearly Things or Destiny or people I don't necessarily agree with on a, a whole lot because of that. Not Destiny, not really, because I don't really uh, have too many issues with him. Some things I disagree with, but I don't have big issues. But Pearly Things, Sneeko, I don't have a lot of respect for those two. So it's hard for me not to take it personal when I see stuff, some of the stuff they do. I want to take personal shots at them, which is why I refrain from making specific videos on them, right? Because I know where it is. I could not be like, let me say this. You know how Pearly has her whole Audacity network, right? It's her version of what the Daily Wire or Prager U is, right? There is no amount of money on this planet that could ever get me to work for the Audacity network because I have no respect for her i would never i could do interviews i could debate but i could never if sneeko started a team right now and said trey we'll pay you a hundred thousand dollars a year to do this there's no amount of money they those two could ever offer me to, for me to do something with them because i have zero respect for them so when shannon's talking about skip bayless and how the relationship had pretty much faltered at that point i think at this point i don't know if there's enough money you could pay shannon and be like hey can you be on the show with skip bayless again He'd probably be like, no, even though it wasn't his choice to necessarily leave. I know that. But now if he had the opportunity to do it again, like if let's say two years down the road, they're like, hey, would you mind just try and see if you can get undisputed together one more time? See where it goes. I think he would say no. Be like, there ain't no amount of money you can get me to get on with somebody who has no respect for me or I have no respect for them. It's going to get bad fast because I don't like them. Right? I don't respect what they do or what they said towards me or what I've and for me personally, it's what I've seen them do to other people. I got no respect for them. So anyway, yeah, there's one more thing that he says that I think is very important and I want to go over it. And what he talks about what he does in his uh, personal life. So let's get it right there. I know you were born in Chicago, but moved to Georgia when you were three months old, if I remember correctly. That's what my research says. Obviously, you played at Savannah State. I'm thinking about a black man in the South growing up in the 70s and 80s and the level of disrespect one could imagine you had to have been exposed to, particularly as a proud black man. And so as a result, you're not going to come up to him. And I'm not talking about Skip Bayless. This is not about Skip Bayless. This is about you. Mm -mm. This is about black men, particularly in South. Black men, period, but especially in the South, particularly in do during those times. There's a level of vitriol, venom, um, and beyond that one could easily surmise y'all have been subjected to to the point where that thing that you just talked about, disrespect, it ain't happening. You're not tolerating it. And when you see this guy who is loud, who will get in your face, who will challenge you if you approach him the wrong way, et cetera, et cetera. That's not rude. That's not disrespectful. That's not un that's not unprofessional. That's a person that's proud and is letting you know 
there's a certain standard you will treat him mm-hmm. with. That is yeah. what I have always said about you yeah. since, or at least over the last year or so, late year or two, when people have asked me about you. Am I wrong in that description? No, you're absolutely right. Because of the way I carry myself, because I give everybody a certain, I, I believe everybody deserves a certain level of respect. No matter what I might think of someone, I will give them a, a level of respect. Just as a common courtesy, as a man, as a woman, as a human being, being a person, I will give them that level of respect. And I think the thing is that the, when people see me out, I'm kind of nothing like what I am on television. I'm kind of quiet. I'm kind of to myself. I'm reserved. One of the things that people that once they get to know me is that I'm not as boisterous at home. I'm I'm in my own place. Right. I, you know, I get my point across. I have a a, a a voice that projects. Uh, I can be charming. I can be charismatic. I can be, I can be loud. I can be a lot of different things, but I don't think I, I, I've never carried myself and I don't think I'm better than anybody. I might think I can do my job better than you could do your job, but I don't think because I was a prof- ex-professional athlete or I'm on television, I'm better than you. I don't carry myself like that. All I ask, all I've ever asked from anyone was to give me the level of respect that I've shown you. That's all I've asked. That, that's that's it. I don't I don't I don't you know d- disrespect anybody. Uh, to this day, is yes sir, no sir, is yes ma'am, no ma'am. Um, I've kind of gotten away from holding the doors for for women because I don't want them to say, "Well, he held the door because he wanted to look at my butt." Or <laughs> I don't ride the elevator, Stephen A. I don't ride the elevator with single women. Wow. I don't. If if a server comes to my room and she's a female, I'll take the cart at the door. I won't allow them in my room. They start to clean the room. I'll go sit in the hallway wow. while they clean the room. I just try to protect myself at all angles. And I've been very respectful to everybody. But that hurt me that day. That that really did, Stephen A. All right. So I want to talk about that part because we all know what happened with Michael um, Irvin. <laughs> he simply talked to somebody at, in, a, in the lobby where people were around him. And he lost his job at first take. And he lost his job on the NFL Network, which he's back on now. Uh, either NFL One Network or Monday Night Football. I apologize if I get that wrong. Nonetheless, he had lost his job, right? They, they suspended him, right? Off of an accusation of him talking to a woman, which he, he won his settlement. He had sued them and they settled. Well, I don't know what the amount particularly was, but they settled out of court, I believe. So nonetheless, I'm with Shannon on this. Why pro- not protect yourself? I don't care. I do not care. I am the very, the, I am very much the way I am. There's a reason I dress the way I do too. I like to look nice and not always the best. Sometimes I'm still getting used to it, you know, but you know, when I dress nice, I always, first of all, project my voice. When I talk to people, I look them right in their eye and I try my best to avoid bad situations. I, even when I'm shopping, right? I know it sounds stupid, but if there's a woman on an aisle by herself, I won't even go in the aisle. I, just, I guess I go somewhere else, you know, uh, unless there's other people around. Obviously, at Walmart, it's a little bit easier because there's so many people. But some places you go, there's not a whole lot of room. Maybe just you and the woman in the entire store. Right. Some, I live in a small town. So I won't I'll go out of my way to be like, well, I guess I just wait to go get on that aisle. I was the other night. There was two women. I was sitting around waiting to uh, talk to somebody that worked at the store. But unfortunately, they were taking a little bit of time, so I kind of had to just stand there and look awkward. Well, these two young women came in, and it seems like every aisle I happened to sit and just be waiting, they also went to. So in order for myself to make sure I didn't look like I was stalking or look like I was a creep or something like that, even though I know I'm not those things, I had to keep moving to different aisles and just making sure dang near they didn't even see me. I know this stuff sounds so goofy, and it's like, and I know what some people say. Like I hear women say, "If you're not a creep, you don't have to worry about being a creep." That doesn't matter. I we saw Michael Irvin have a conversation with the woman and just have a normal conversation. Got accused, lost everything. So what can I trust? He wasn't even trying to be a creep. Nobody around him said he was a creep. There were many men who came out and many women who knew him and said he didn't do this. It's not who he is. I don't believe it, but it didn't matter. All they had to hear was, oh, he did it. That's it. Conversation over. And so, yeah, I do I do stuff that may seem stupid. It's stuff that may seem weird to protect myself at all costs. Open the doors for women. If I open the door for a woman, 
I will look in every direction you best believe. Not that I open doors for women, because most of the places I go, they have automatic doors. But just saying, if it does happen, I'll be like, here you go. I may look to the sky. I may look anywhere. I don't care. If a woman's standing in front of me at the grocery store, I turn around. That's how much I do. If a woman's in front of me at the store, I will turn around. Fully turn around. Not like kind of looking, not kind of looking at the cashier. I will turn my full body around. I don't care. I protect myself at all costs. Might as well get in the habit of it. And I'm not saying women are evil. I'm not saying women are bad people. I am saying there are people out there who will do something to you. There are, women, there, there are people out there who will try to ruin you because they don't like you or maybe they're trying to get you some money or something like that. And so, yeah, I don't take any chances. Would I let a single woman in my room to clean? Absolutely not. I'm with Shannon. I'm going to go on about my day. I'll, I'll go get some downstairs. I, even when I'm in the gym with the woman, I'll try to get my workout done as fast as I can. But in most cases, if they walk in on me, I'll just go do something else. I bet. Like, well, I wasn't going to do chest today, but today I guess I'm doing cardio. I'll go hop on the row machine. I'll do anything. I get out of there. There's only one woman in my life that I, I'm ever alone with in any case, in any scenario. And obviously that would be family members and that'd be my wife. OK, that's it. Those are the only two people. I'm not. I mean, two people. That's the only people I'd be uh, probably in a lone winter room with. Right. That are women. If you ain't you, if you ain't my aunt, you ain't my sister, you ain't my mother or my grandmother or my wife or my daughter. We're not going to be in the same room. I'm never going to put myself in a place like that ever. OK, you are not going to be able to say you're going to have to go out of your way to accuse me of saying something crazy to you or accuse me of doing something to you. Because dang near I, I dang near have my I might be live streaming. <laughs> you might if you get in the room with me alone, I might put, put my phone on the tripod and start live streaming. And so if anything happens, but hey, y'all yeah, see it. I'm live streaming, baby. She says I did anything. I live streaming to the, the second she left. Like I said, I wouldn't put myself in that situation, but that's how serious I take it. Anyway, guys, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to, man. I, I've been forgetting to say that. But uh, let me know what y'all think about this whole interview. Please go watch it on the Stephen A. Smith show. Great interview. I really enjoyed it. It's always good to see two, uh, two grown men talking about stuff that's so important and for us to get some of the stuff, the questions we had out of the way. So that's all I got to say about that. Goodbye.